Hi, Stephen Caleb from Brownells, and we're back with another riveting episode of Smithbusters. And today, Caleb has been checking his list and checking us twice. What do you got on this list? I'm, I'm going to find out who's naughty or nice. Uh, all right, that was weird. Anywho, uh, so this video, what it is, we're going to do top five AR builder misconceptions or myths, if you will. Uh, the reason we're doing this, I... I was a fool and spent a lot of time in her comment section, mm. as I sometimes do. You're you know? supposed to. Yeah, you know, it's I, 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 I love you guys. So, I say you guys. I'm, I'm y'all. It's y'all. I'm, I promise I'm from the south. All right. Anyways, going off on a tangent here. Let me let me get back on track, Steve. Uh, so yeah, that that's kind of what brought this video about, especially when we did our building an accurate AR. Uh, that that those videos. There was a lot of stuff in the comments because you know we 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 appreciate we uh, you know make a call out. So if you have any tips or whatever, post them down below. We do that kind of stuff, yeah. and we appreciate that kind of stuff. Um, don't stop doing it, okay? But there were some things uh, we we kind of need to address. Some misconceptions, and hence getting into the myths. Getting let's let's just jump right into it. Number one, after the longest intro ever. Uh, so number one is going to be the AR upper block. So when you're building an upper receiver, there are people out there that are extremely adamant. They say you have to use a reaction rod type thing. Oh, okay. Um, preferably something with a wing on top, something that goes into your barrel extension. Right. Because if you don't, you're putting excessive stress on your upper receiver. Hmm. So... Let me just kind of back up here on this and say, you know, that, and because there's there's upper receiver blocks that just hold the pinholes. Oh yeah. And we that's what I used during the the video, just because it was a very a very affordable tool that I was using, mm -hmm. and I wanted to show that you could build an accurate AR uh, using affordable tools, which I mean is a is a great thing, right? And we were holding it right here. We put maybe fifty foot pounds of pressure on a barrel nut. Uh huh. Listen. You shouldn't be putting so much torque on this thing. These these aren't these are pretty beefy. Yeah. They're they're yeah. gonna they're gonna take a lot. All right. We put like I said, like fifty. We we ended up going like fifty foot pounds. We were nowhere near any kind of like critical points. You know, this if you're building an AR, you want to use one of those blocks because they're more affordable. That's all you but you can fit in your budget right now. You know, mm -hmm. that's perfectly okay. That'll work just fine for any AR build. And we did a high-end build with it, so, I mean, they work. Yeah, just stay with a reasonable torque spec on your uh, barrel nut. Yeah, now, if you got something older that, like, maybe somebody loctite it or something, you're trying to break something free that has a lot of torque on it, maybe then you want to start looking at some other ones. But, right. um, yeah, as far as those go, that's perfectly fine. Now, you know, for the for the guy saying, you know, you have to use a reaction rod, it, it uh, indexes off of your barrel extension. And then it has this wing on top to support it. Like that's that's the best way to do it. Um, it's a great way to do it. This one is the Midwest Industries upper receiver wrench. It's a mm -hmm. great, great tool. However, you can use other stuff just fine. Like for example, whenever we get these comments, Steve, what we're using uh, at the time was the device. Now the device is the most solid upper receiver block I've, I've very, ever used in very my solid. entire life. So the upper receiver mounts in it, then this tool securely mounts to this wing that's inside here. It like keys into it, right? And then I'm gonna gotta get that ejection port out the way there. And then it locks into your upper receiver, so you have contact on that upper wing. And then all of this diameter here, it, it's it's a tight. This thing's not moving. It's a tight fit. This is the most secure way to to do your upper receiver. So the complaint with that was, hey, you know, whenever you're installing your barrel that way, you're putting unnecessary stress on that pin when you tighten your barrel nut down. It's like, come on. No. Really? No. Let me let me show you something. I'm about to about to blow your mind. All right. So if I take something like this wrench here, and they're all gonna be about the same tolerance. This isn't this isn't a bad wrench, like I said. And this barrel extension, now listen, this is a good barrel. This ain't no middle of the mall barrel, okay? This isn't, this is a good barrel. Okay. 
So we put the barrel extension in, and if you notice, there's a little bit of play there, left and right. All right? So with that being said, if you put your barrel into an upper receiver, and this is a, this is a pretty snug fitting upper receiver, and you wiggle your pin left and right, you wiggle that barrel, there's a little bit of play in that pin. How about that? It's about the same amount, if not maybe a little more than what's on here, Steve. So what does that mean? That means that by your logic, you're still putting stress on that pin by using one of these because of those tolerances, right? So like I said, that's not a bad tool to use. You're just, you're, you, you, what it comes down to is y'all do too much, you know? You just, uh, you have a basic understanding of the tool, so you're making up more complex issues that don't exist, if that makes sense. Yeah, my so, head hurts a little bit just thinking about it. Yeah, you know, I'm going to, you know, well, let's just, let, we're, just show, we're just showing you, okay? But listen, if you want to keep using these tools, that's great. I use them too. They're, like I said, they're not bad tools and they're not pointless tools, but your, re, your justification for using them isn't true. So... It's perfectly okay to use a tool like the device. It's actually going to hold it more secure than those. All right. And uh, also, one of the other arguments I saw for using one of these is that it makes sure that your barrel extension is aligned, like aligns your barrel properly at the clock at 12 o'clock position and all that stuff. It's like, look, if you have issues with that, you're going to notice it very soon anyway. So, I mean, there's... Quit, quit making up things. I think back in the old days, I assembled one or two just by putting the barrel in the receiver, the bolt in the back, and putting it in a padded vise. Yeah, that's... Uh, and cranked it up. That's that's how you had to do some of them back in the day. Yeah. I mean, look, look at all the tools we have on the market now. It's insane. I know. I know. And uh, they're, for the most part, all really good tools. Um, they make the job easier. They do. They do. And, oh, another one. So whenever we were lapping the upper receiver... Um, we left some raw aluminum on the face of it. Oh my God. And that, that triggered some people, Steve. I wish you wouldn't have said that. Oh no. But no, we, we, we put grease there before we assemble everything. Mm -hmm. That grease is going to protect it. And it's a really, it's a flush fit. It's nice and flat. It's mounted perfectly against that barrel extension. That grease is in between there. It's, it's not going to corrode. You're, it's protecting against galvanic reaction. Listen, don't saying? get us started on that again. My goodness, <laughs> if you don't, if you want to know about galvanic one of my faves. reaction and corrosion, just search that on our channel, and you'll yeah. see our whole video on that. Bill Geisley weighed in on it as well. Um, yeah, so there's that. Okay, so talking about that now. This one, well, I'll save that one for last. Let me let okay. me let me skip around okay. here. Uh, another one's going to be gas block alignment. Sure. We've covered this before. So um, guys saying that, hey, for gas block alignment, you have to, this one's, this one's a tight, nice snug fit. Like I said, this isn't a middle of the mall barrel. All right. Mm. Um, so guys are saying like you can't go all the way to the shoulder. In order to be properly aligned, you right. have to come back, you know, whatever distance to be properly aligned. Now, uh, that doesn't matter. Again, y'all do too much, okay? So if you look at the, the gas port hole in your barrel, it is significantly smaller, and you're not going to be able to see it on camera here, but just look at whatever gas block you have. That hole is significantly smaller than that hole. There's overlap. There's plenty of overlap, which means you can go all the way to the shoulder and still have um, complete, like this hole completely covering that hole, so you still get your full gas flow through there. It's almost as if the people building the gas blocks thought maybe they won't be using a four end cap. You know? And they won't have that space there. It's, it's almost like they designed it that way. It's all, Steve, man, I, I don't know. It's almost like that. Um, and also, kind of, if you think about it, the bell on your gas tube here. Right. Uh, if you go all the way to the shoulder, that just means that bell is even deeper inside your gas key, which can't be a bad thing. You know? No, well, the reason, I mean, you wouldn't want to move it back half an inch. But I mean, yeah, but I mean, a little bit further back, in yeah. theory, you could probably get a little better gas seal that way. I don't know, maybe. Um, but yeah, so don't worry about that. That's not an issue. And let's move on to, let's move on to something else. Okay, which one are we on now? Are we on three or four? We're on number four, Steve. Okay, cool. we're, we're getting there. 
We're getting, you got somewhere I'll to be? I'll keep it up. Hey, I'll you got somewhere to be? I mean, <laughs> come on. Uh, so no, number four is uh, you should clamp the barrel when installing the muzzle device uh, to not, again, that y'all, you guys are obsessed with this indexing pin. It's, it's, it's going to take, it's okay. All right. Listen. So uh, some guys are saying you have to clamp the barrel. Don't clamp your upper receiver or anything like that when you're installing your muzzle device. Um, okay. Because it puts excessive torque on that indexing pin. It does not. Because your barrel nut is pushing, this indexing pin goes in. Your barrel nut is putting so much force against the front of that receiver that that indexing pin, left or right, it's not gonna, it's not gonna move. Maybe there's a little bit of stress on it, sure, but nothing near what it would be to, to, to break it. Not even close. Because you shouldn't be putting that much torque on your muzzle device. I can't see why you would. That's... Yeah, I mean, we, listen, we, we had Mike Mahalski from Sons of Liberty here. We talked about muzzle device torque. We talked about what happens if you over torque it. And we intentionally over torqued the heck out of one. And we didn't break her indexing right. pin. So, um, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. Use use your upper vice block when you're installing your muzzle device. Perfectly fine. That's okay. Good. Now this last one is my favorite. My absolute favorite. All right. And it's uh, in regards to torque wrenches. Ooh. So I got a, uh, I got fussed at in the comment section, Steve. Again? Oh, quite a bit actually, because I used the torque wrench to remove a barrel nut. Uh huh. Um, and people freaked out. They were like, hey, really? that is absolutely terrible for your torque wrench if you want your tools to last. What? And I was like, how the heck are you guys tightening left-handed fasteners if you can't go that way with your torque wrench? Yeah. Yeah. But no, so uh, what it comes down to, your torque wrench, all right, I, I had to like make some phone calls and do some research to make sure I wasn't messed up. Wow. Uh, turns out I'm okay. You, you guys are, I'm not going to say y'all are messed up. Y'all are just, again, there's, here's that phrase again. Y'all do too much. All right. That's the phrase of the video. But no, so uh, torque wrenches have a, a finite amount of uses because right. they have a spring in them. Right. right? And um, as we know, springs wear out through use. And so whenever I torqued down the barrel nut and then I loosened that barrel nut, Loosening that barrel nut was technically a use of my torque wrench as well. It do, it's not going to throw it out of calibration if you go, you know, left hand with it, you know, clockwise, counterclockwise. It doesn't matter. The wrench doesn't know if you're going left or right. It just knows that it's being used, okay? So, in theory, if you want to get the maximum use out of your torque wrench and just have all these, like, crazy uses, sure. Tighten down with your torque wrench, and if you need to loosen something, use a breaker bar if you want. I mean, honestly, this is an a this is only used for AR-15s. All right, that's pretty much all I use this for. If it's going out of calibration through use, it's probably going to be like a foot pound or two over a crazy amount of years, probably. Right. Right. I think that's realistic. It assuming you're using a good torque wrench with decent spring steel and stuff in it, that's that's made well. Now, if you're using one of your like weird Chinese torque wrenches, sure, you'll probably have issues sooner. Chances are it's not calibrated the way they said it was anyway. Whatever. I'm getting off on a foreign tool tangent here. Anyways, um, so with that being said, with all those uses, I'm something else that oh, it's probably going to wear out first, honestly. Like the ratchet, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then I'm probably going to stop using it way before it gets worn out to the point to where it's not good for AR-15s. Look, they put a reversing switch on there for a reason. Yeah. It's meant that, to be used. Oh, there's a, that's what that's for, Steve? Yeah. That's so yeah. I can go left and right hand? Mm -hmm. Why would they put that on there if it's bad for the wrench? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. But you should be pretty safe if you dial that sucker all the way up to loosen something. You know, you're not going to come anywhere near the break point. Yeah. So. Yep, again. And then uh, people were saying the sudden shock of it breaking free, breaking a bolt free. Oh, please. Can throw it out of cal calibration. It might upset their teacup they got balancing on their bench. But... That is good. That's a good one, Steve. Um, but no, it, it's like I said, this the whole thing, part, like the internal mechanism in here, it's not some like, 
Swiss watch with all these little gears no, and dials. No, it's not that at all. It's a. Uh, it's just a. It's a big spring. It's like a mechanics tool. Yeah. So. Uh, it's not that delicate. It's okay to loosen stuff with your torque wrench. It's not going to ruin your wrench. Bust. So those are the top five AR building uh, myths and misconceptions. All right. So we, and, uh, any of them not busted? No, we busted all of them. All right. Just busted on through like a train. Yeah, just bull in a china shop. Yeah. Well, it was a meandering path. You got to you got to say that. Listen, I. Uh, it's not scripted. I just you know we had the points. We talked about the points, and I I had to. Steve didn't go through and read the comments, so I had to. I, I kind of took the lead on this one and filled him in, and now he's probably going to go take some Advil or something. Uh, so that's where we'll be. My coffee's cold. I'm going to get some more coffee. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm behind you on that. All right. Well, if you want to sound off in the comments, we'll read them. One of us will anyway. I, I, listen, I, uh, I'll, I'll take that burden. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're looking at us on the website... Be sure to give us a call if you have any problems with your AR. We've got the tech line just for that, so let us help you out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time with yet another exciting episode of Smithbusters.